A couple of months ago I showed you these aphids on my cucumber plants. They are melon aphids, also known as cotton aphids. Melon aphid is a worldwide pest of a large range of plants. The cucumber plants have finished, but the aphids haven't. They are now feeding and breeding on my zucchini plants. You can tell something is going on here because of the ants. The ants are feeding on honeydew which has rained down from above. Honeydew is the excess plant sap excreted by aphids. The aphids are feeding on the underside of leaves above the ants. But aphids are not the only insects on these leaves. Let's take some back to the lab and see what we can find. You know what this insect is because we talked about it in that previous video. I'll link it up in the cards here. It's a hoverfly larva, a voracious predator of aphids. But hoverflies aren't the only predators on these plants. These are the eggs of ladybird beetles. The eggs will hatch into larvae, which will feed on the aphids. And when the larvae pupate and eventually emerge as adult beetles, those beetles will feed on the aphids as well. But wait, there's more. You get this set of steak knives. No, no, just kidding. Remember those terrible late night TV ads? Anyway, get it back on track, Dennis. There is another insect at work here, a parasitic wasp. Look closely and you can see a couple of aphids that look a bit different. They are called aphid mummies. The aphid is dead and a wasp is developing inside. Here's a close up image of an aphid mummy. This is how it happens. A wasp lays an egg inside the aphid. The egg hatches into a wasp larva, which begins feeding on the aphid on the inside. The aphid eventually dies, forming the mummy, and the wasp larva pupates inside. When an adult wasp emerges from its pupa, all the while inside the aphid mummy, it chews a neat little exit hole and flies away to find a mate to start the life cycle all over again. In this way, eventually most of the aphids will be parasitized. That's what normally happens, but on these zucchinis, the aphids seem to have the upper hand. Check these flowers out, they look terrible. Am I worried? No, not really. The season has just changed. In other words, it's getting a lot colder and the plants are declining rapidly. The plants are really stressed and the aphids are taking advantage. It often happens like this with plants that are in decline for some reason or other that aphids or other pests will take hold. Anyway, that's what's happening here, at least for now, until the first frosts. Any aphids left on the plants won't survive that frost, nor will the plants for that matter, but the little wasps will survive because they are protected inside those aphid mummies. But what if an aphid infestation like this occurred during summer? Well, the plants would be growing rapidly, the aphids would be breeding prolifically, but so would the predators and parasites, and they are most likely to bring those aphids under control. In my experience, a few leaves here and there covered with aphids are no big deal. I mean, take my cucumber plants, for example. Sure, there were some aphids, but there were lots of predators and parasites there as well. And I had a bumper crop. In other words, I had too many cucumbers to deal with. So it's all good. As for the zucchinis, this was an experimental late planting to see if I could get some fruit before the plants declined at the end of autumn. And yes, it worked. I mean, they're looking pretty crook now, and, but that's fairly normal for um, zucchini plants towards the end of their life. They become infected with uh, powdery mildew, for example, and, you know, and, and if they've got powdery mildew and aphids, like these plants do, um, they look a bit crook. But I'm not really bothered because the plants are finished. It's the end of the season and I'll pull them out. If you want to learn more about the little wasps that parasitize aphids, check this video out here. And thanks for watching.